Hey guys, Janet here with Radiant Wanderings. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and stay a while. Today we are talking about 10 trips you should be planning during coronavirus lockdown. Now I know you're thinking, I don't have a desire to travel anywhere, but I'm telling you airlines and hotels are offering some epic deals right now. Pair that with the airlines waiving change fees and extending waiver expiration dates. Some hotels are allowing you to cancel up to 24 hours before your stay. And it's a great time to plan some of those travels. So let's get into it and figure out where I think you should go when this is all over. All right guys, so in my mind, all post-coronavirus destinations are not created equal. To me, the main benefit of traveling somewhere right after travel bans are lifted and you're free to do so is far less tourists in places and great deals. So my top 10 are going to be focused on that. A caveat here, I'm not a doctor. So definitely, definitely take your health into consideration here. Some people are gonna be able to travel a lot sooner than others just because of pre-existing conditions or greater risk factors. I work for the airlines, I work for a hotel. So my top 10 list and my advice is coming from that perspective. And just to be honest, typically us airline workers are more adventurous and, we, and we're used to the media kind of playing up the danger of a place. And then we get there and we're like, I don't understand what it was all about. I'm not saying that's how coronavirus is. I'm just saying as an airline industry, I'm coming more from that perspective. And this is a 10 in 10 video. So once we get started, I'm gonna to try to get this in in 10 minutes. So if I go a little too fast or you need more information, I will post links below to blog posts and most of these destinations. I haven't been to all of them, but if I have, there will be a link to a blog post with more details on what we loved, how we got there, what to do, what we hated. So check that out. And if you do decide to book airline tickets or hotels, I highly, highly recommend reading the fine print before you hit that book button. So with the airlines, waiving the change fee, that's typically a $200 fee with any given airline, but there is still going to be a change in fare if you do end up changing that ticket. So basically in economy class, let's say there's so many fares at this price and the next price and the next price. And if you get the cheapest price that may not be available at a later date when you're looking or ticket prices may have gone up for that later date. So make your best guess when you're booking, but it is really nice that they're waiving that $200 change fee and also extending waiver expiration dates. And one more thing to consider as I go through this list is your passport. And I mentioned this in my 10 travel tips to know before you go, some destinations require that your passport not expire for six months after you exit that country. So if your passport is close to expiration, that may limit the destinations that you can go to. If you don't have a passport, obviously we're talking domestically, wherever that is for you. The US passport agencies are putting passport applications on hold right now. So if you don't already have that or it expires soon, you're gonna have a hard time getting that in time to maybe capitalize on some of these deals. All right, you guys, so number 10 on my list is a staycation. I realize not everybody is as adventurous and uninhibited as I am and some people may only be comfortable going so far from home. So I would say pick a destination within five hours from your home currently. Maybe you've already been and you love that destination. Maybe you've never been and you live that close to it. So go ahead, plan that vacation. Book a couple nights, two to four nights in a hotel. You'll be supporting local businesses. You'll be getting out of the house, which I hope you love your house and love being there. But after this quarantine, I'm sure you'll be ready to get out and you'll get to see some new places and have some new adventures. If number 10, was close to home, this one is about as far from home as you can get. Number nine is New Zealand. New Zealand has top travel bucket list for years with its mountains and ocean views, volcanoes, rainforests, diverse wildlife, so many great things in New Zealand. And what better time to go? Now, I don't think New Zealand is usually crowded, so it doesn't tick the tourist box. But airfare to New Zealand, wow, that's a long haul flight. One of the longest you can do, I believe, <laughs> from the US anyway. And what better time to get a great deal on that flight cost than now. And number eight on my list, we are coming back to the US. Come to Montana. Okay, so I know I'm partial to Montana. I live near Glacier National Park. It is absolutely gorgeous. I never get sick of it. So there is that, but seriously, you guys, Flights into Kalispell, Montana right now, they typically range from 500 up to 1,200, 1,500 round trip. 
Right now, my sister just booked him to come visit us in August for 300 a piece round trip. It's a stellar deal. Combine that with the fact that last summer we had over 3 million tourists to Glacier National Park, and this summer there should be hardly any. And while I'm excited about that as a local and really thrilled to have the park to myself, so I shouldn't really be telling you guys this, but I just can't help myself. I can't keep it. <laughs> so you're going to have far less people vying for those parking spots, those camping spots, so if you can make it happen, Montana should definitely be on that list. And coming in at number seven is South Africa. South Africa is another huge bucket list item. They have beautiful wineries. You can do self-drive or guided safaris with all the big game wildlife sightings. They have ocean and Cape Town and mountains and rugged cliffs. So you can see penguins. There are so many great things to do in South Africa. We absolutely loved our time there. Now this one is usually quite affordable anyway due to the US dollar versus South African Rand exchange rate. Uh, however, it is the flight cost and time that usually give people pause and make this very difficult to attain. So right now I say capitalize on those flight deals. If you can book it, do it. I've seen a couple articles that say that maybe certain places won't be opening up to international travel until 2021. But for this one and for New Zealand, the bonus here is that January, February, March in South Africa and New Zealand, that's summer. So it's winter here in the States. To get away then would be perfectly ideal. And coming in at number six is Venice, Italy. Okay, I know Italy has been super hard hit with coronavirus and you may have definite inhibitions about going here. But guys, Venice last year had 36 million visitors. Imagine visiting this floating city with a fraction of those tourists having it almost all to yourself. I think it would be magical. Combine that with the fact that Italy's small businesses, which is most of what drives Venice, are going to be in great need of your tourist dollars. They're going to be very welcoming. I know they were getting sick of tourists. <laughs> now it's going to be a completely different story. They will welcome you with open arms and it will be a magical experience. And very similar to Venice, coming in at number five is Rome, Italy. Rome is typically packed with tourists vying for position at historical sites and landmarks. When we went two years ago, the Vatican museums were so crowded. Once we got partway through, I wanted nothing more than to just get back outside where I would not be jostled about by tourists. It was really sad too because the Sistine Chapel is at the very end of your tour. And by the time we got there, all I wanted to do was get out. And that's the whole reason I wanted in to begin with. So imagine if you can time the trip perfectly when travel bans lift, you might just see a side of Rome that very few people will ever get to see. And number four is the Amalfi Coast, Italy. I know, I'm stuck in Italy. I love Italy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but Italy is one of the top tourist countries in the world and so it has to top my list. Amalfi Coast has a distinct reputation and it does not fail to uphold it. A lot of places, you know, you see the Instagram post or this or that and then you get there and you're kind of disappointed. Amalfi Coast is not one of those. Now, if you went in summer and stayed in Positano, typically I believe you might be frustrated because it is so hot and crowded. We went in April and we stayed in Priano, which is um, a little over from Positano but still easily accessible and it was great. However, if you go after coronavirus travel bans have lifted, before all the mass tourism begins again, you might just get a slice of heaven on that beach all to yourself. And number three on my travel list is Hawaii. I know that Hawaii is currently quarantining arriving passengers for 14 days like so many other destinations. I'm not suggesting you hop on a plane there tomorrow, but when travel bans have lifted and you're able to go, you should be on one of those first flights out. If you don't know which island to pick, price check them all. Choose the one with the best deal. I've heard amazing things about Kauai. I have not been there yet. We loved Maui. Of course, we really just stayed at the Waldorf Astoria and did the whole resort life. We went to the big island and we stayed on Waikoloa Village, Hilton Waikoloa Village, and snorkeled there. The snorkeling was amazing. If you could go to Honolulu and do Pearl Harbor and all of that. So research those islands, what's most important to you, maybe the road to Hana, waterfalls, hikes, whatever it is, and get those tickets booked. And coming in at number two is Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Amsterdam is popular among airline employees, but I don't know how popular it is amongst other 
people or if they even think of it or know of it. Amsterdam is referred to as the Venice of the North and maybe that's why we love it so much, but it is a family favorite. It has storybook city, storybook looking countryside. It is so cute and quaint and the Dutch people are incredibly friendly. They speak great English. It's just a wonderful destination. There are direct flights to Amsterdam from almost any major city. So I believe that you should be able to snag a great flight deal on this one right now. We spend a week in the city and its surroundings. We did bike rides into the countryside. We went and saw the Corrie Ten Boom house, the Anne Frank house. We did a food tour in the Jordan district, which I highly recommend. It was so delicious. Just walking and biking through the city. You're going to absolutely love this one. Okay, and number one on my travel bucket list when coronavirus travel bans have lifted is Bora Bora or your dream travel destination. You know the one I'm talking about. Your anniversary trip, your graduation trip, a special birthday trip, and you might be thinking, well, it's not the right year yet. I don't care, just book it and make it happen. Bora Bora had hoped that we could make it there for our 25th wedding anniversary. Last year, all of the stars aligned. I got great deals on things. Um, United started a new flight to Tahiti that I thought I could get on. And so we went for our 20th instead of our 25th. And I am so glad we did because that's the way of life. Like you never know what's going to happen in the future. So if you can make it happen now, definitely do. Bora Bora is amazing. It is typically a very expensive destination. So if you are able to get deals on that right now, I highly recommend it. We just went and soaked up the sunshine. We did a half day private snorkel tour on a boat, which was, oh my goodness. We saw the uh, black tip reef shark, stingray, eagle ray. He was looking for manta ray. We didn't find those. Eels, the tropical fish surrounding us. It was so beautiful. That water is not edited. That is truly how it is there. Cannot recommend it enough. But even if your dream destination is Paris or I don't know, <laughs> Whatever your dream destination is, make it happen right now. Book that when you can snag those deals and you have those free cancellations. It's kind of a nice little fallback caveat, which you don't normally get that benefit. All right, so those are my top 10. I'm curious which one you would uh, dare to book and plan right now. If you are super adventurous, more so than me and uninhibited, book a cruise. Those cruise lines are gonna be in a world of hurt. I just imagine there's gonna be some incredible stellar deals. I don't know if I'm ready to get on a cruise ship quite yet, <laughs> but maybe if the deal is good enough, goodness. But yes, if that's been your dream, Mediterranean cruise, Alaska cruise, tropical Caribbean cruise, whatever it is, you could get some great deals. All right guys, so leave a comment below if you prefer domestic travel, international travel, a staycation. What's your MO here when travel vans have listed? It's been a great time. Have an awesome week at home doing whatever it is you're doing and I'll see you next time.